There we go. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Le Revolution Radio Freedom .com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener supported radio station. Morning. If you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also simulcasting tonight as every Thursday. Friday and Saturday with Leaving the Farm, the Public Law, and Leaving the Farm again on No Borders Radio at noborderradio.co.uk as well as Tier Nassour. And we thank you, of course, for joining us. Um, we'll just get right into it. This week has been just uh, flabbergasting for me. Um, Things have been really busy behind the scenes, back channel, as always. Um, you know, we've got some reality checks coming down the pike in the mainstream media this week. Now, from America.AlJazeera.com, public schools regularly restrain, seclude disabled children, says report. U.S. public schools routinely isolate and physically restrain disabled students deemed to have misbehaved or become uncooperative, according to a new report released Thursday. Analysis of Department of Education data by NPR and news website ProPublica found that public schools restrained or secluded students more than 267,000 times in the 2012 school year. Figures also indicate that around 75% of the students who were restrained had physical, emotional, or intellectual disabilities. Practices include pinning students face down on the floor, locking them in dark rooms, and tying them up with straps, handcuffs, bungee cords, or even duct tape. The data showed 163,000 instances of physical restraint from mechanical restraints used 7,600 times and 104,000 times when children were placed in secluded, quote, scream rooms, ProPublica reported. For more than a decade, mental health facilities and other institutions had worked to curtail the practice. Oh, yeah, this is all just crap now. I'm not even going to read this part because this is the psychological industry this is the action of psychiatry restraining children abusing children terrorizing children torturing sh children using the quote public school to make it look nice these are the identical exact exact replicas of the Hitler youth camps these are not something different. Hitler was working for and with Congress. 1933, Hitler came in with the Acts of Enablement, which allowed the Reich rat to be created out of the Reich tag. Oh, everybody says we don't speak German. Okay. Reich tag means federal state, Reich rat means national state. Now, the federal government, the Confederacy, what you know as your federal government, created Hitler through congressional acts, created Nazi Germany through court process, through the world courts in 1927. The Bear Corporation came in and asked the world courts to indemnify Poland to cut the overhead that the corporations were experiencing. The slaughter you saw was the Bear Corporation, was BP, was Ford. You get where we're going here? There's nothing that is outside of the relativity that this is a repeat, the identical process of Nazi Germany guised under what is known as, quote, America. America is a style or chain of events, as it states in the Articles of Confederation. It says it's a depopulation pogrom. 
The citizen has been known as the enemy of the state since the 1947 National Security Act, when everything ramped up because the populace was so great that it was taking away the resources of the federal government. 1802 is when Congress came in with its little act of enablement called the 1802 Indemnification Convention. This created each Reichsrat, what you call states and counties, under the federal government. Each act of enablement is called the state constitution. And I know that all of the patriots out there are screaming right now. Well, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Wake up. This is Nazi Germany. It looks really nice. It looks soft. That's why it's called soft cell. Through the actions of war tactic of hearts and minds, they've sold you everything and got you to buy into this stuff. And Jesus tried to warn you, the Bible, the biblical text itself said, don't buy of that tree of knowledge. Stop buying those concepts. And it said, it kills you. When you partake of the tree of knowledge, you're going to experience death. That wasn't it, the only school um, story lately. Let me go find it here because I'm wow behind. I guess. Um, let's see here. Maybe I didn't load it yet. My help. Sorry about that, folks. I was um, talking to Clint. I've got a show with Clint tomorrow night on um, Corporation Nation. And I always forget to uh, remind all of our listeners about that um, just because I'm not very good at time and constructs and alarm clocks. <laughs> you know, it, gets, it doesn't get any better than this, folks. It's been a very, very, very interesting week. You know, here we are. We're... Uh, acting and participating as a court, and that means bank, of course, as defined in Black's Law Dictionary. And um, for the longest time here, behind the scenes, you know, we put on a, a calm front, or what appears to be a calm front, but uh, we've really been sweating. And um, because it it is up to the sheeple, what you patronize determines what happens to humanity and this week of course I mean I've been arguing back and forth with so many agents I mean it, it's just coming out of the woodwork everybody's screaming their heads off and and uh, fighting all of these things and it, it is so interesting to see the um, results of what we've actually facilitated and what has occurred uh, through the United States, through the United States court. And um, the fear now in the agents, you know, finally they're realizing that um, it's not a great idea for them to be working for the United States Incorporated. It's not a great idea to maintain under the uh, directions of the Lord God and patronize that thing because it always forsakes them it, it doesn't have the back it's it's out for the almighty dollar it doesn't care about humanity it doesn't care about its minions it doesn't care about anything other than its bottom dollar and sadly you know now is the time when agents are realizing this but it's a little too late and we were trying to warn everybody as we've been going along and saying hey hello hello quit quit you need you need to run run quickly away from that thing and um, it was all about the money they decided to stay and take their bag of silver and and now that they're being redistributed of that bag of silver and 
they're losing all of their things you know now they want to come and gripe at me and, and whine and cry but it, I tried I really did I tried to um, you know get everybody's attention I tried and I tried and I tried to get everybody to realize what this thing was doing and how it treats its minions and and everything else and and I you know Jesus warned everybody <laughs> Matthew 27 it says Judas always 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 commits political suicide and it, it's never different it doesn't change history always repeats itself and um, it, it's been a really interesting week to say the least it's kept us quite busy over on the island echo.co.uk parents remove children from prison school updated Parents are continuing to arrive at Rydell Academy this morning, Wednesday, to remove their children from the school following a crackdown on uniform, with many describing the situation as, quote, like being in a prison. Uh, of course, this is all a gimmick. They want the children to look like Hitler youth. I mean, come on. The, the next step is to get them to raise their hands in there and, and maintain Heil Hitler. Oh, they already do that. They worship a flag. They actually put their hands over their heart and worship a flag instead of their family and their uh, community, which is what Jesus taught. He said, love thy neighbor, love thyself as God. Nobody wanted to listen. And so you've got a whole bunch of Hitler youth now and um, the fallout is going to be crazy it's going to be hellacious if you don't get control over your own families your own communities and your own children as you stop patronizing this thing that's killing everybody it's imperative that you stop patronizing that thing. It's it's absolutely imperative because this is it's getting worse and worse and worse. You're watching Nazi Germany play out right before your eyes, and it all goes back to those original E fours. Last night, Bo was talking about the E fours of Sparta, and I thought I'd touch on that. Um, you know, just simply from Wiki E four E P H O R, the E fours which from Greek stems from on or over and to see one who oversees they were leaders of ancient Sparta and shared power with the Spartan kings five e4s were elected annually who swore on behalf of the city while the kings swore for themselves now of course Sparta it existed however the lawmaker of Sparta never existed Lycurgus is a concept and you go back into the study of Plutarch and Lycurgus and these are both concepts and, and um, Spartan society the Spartan mindset was created to create and maintain a Spartan citizen just as much as the Roman law created the Roman citizen and we, we still see that you know now uh, we've got federal holidays that are relative of the romantic times acting under romance is acting as a Roman citizen so you're purchasing each other you're buying your girlfriend flowers you're buying her rings and things like this and patriotism and patronage but it's not patronizing her you're patronizing commerce and that's a Roman citizen and if you'd like to learn more about how education plays out against you I suggest you read the treatise on education otherwise known as Emile E-M-I-L-E -E, by Rousseau and in that you'll learn how you're planned out as farm animals how to break the human being for dummies basically how to make them patriotic, how to educate and remove the firstborn son. If you go back to the word pedagogy itself, it means attendance on boys. 
That's where education stems from. And all of this attendance on boys, of course, is a reformation effort. It reforms the mindset so that you can be citizens of a fictional place. The United States of America is a style, S-T-I-L-E, as indicated in the Articles of Confederation, which means a chain of events. And in that, you're not living on a land or in a land mass. You're living in what is known as a pogrom. It's a design to use and kill off citizens by sect of humanity. It's always been a pogrom. It's never been anything but. Those Articles of Confederation, of course, are Articles of Incorporation just as much as the Articles of the Constitution were Articles of Incorporation. Each article incorporating something else into a business schematic. And it's quite the large business at this time. Now we went through the Force of Sparta. However, if you go to your government here, www.fmja.org, you will find the new E-Force, the Federal Magistrate Judges Association. <coughs> now, of course, they have an oath to discharge congressional bankruptcy under 28 U.S.C. subsection 453. And as a bank, they have an oath to hypothecate the human being under 12 U.S.C. subsection 73. Now, of course, each bank, each county is a foreign nation as defined under 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603 and 1610. And in this is the banking schematic itself. Human beings have been used as deposits in holding corporations in order to generate revenue. And that's where we come to the IRS. The Internal Revenue Service has many facets. Child Protection Service is one. Adult Protection Service is another. Department of Health and Human Services is one of the other ones. Now, the Department of Health and Human Services, of course, is the Office of Population Affairs. That was designed and implicated by Henry Kissinger in 1975 as the depopulation program. So it kind of ramped up. 74, 75, 1974 is when Kissinger came in with the Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, which was designed by the National Security Act of 1947. And in this, he said depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. Foreign policy, of course, means communication between two or more foreign states. Each county is a foreign state, so which as they go bankrupt, as each county is dissolved by another, taken over by another, which is usually an unincorporated area. Unincorporated does not mean that it's not incorporated. It means that it's not freestanding, and so usually it's got a regional government um, as defined by the 1789 Judiciary Act, which is the banking schematic. Now let's go over to the court process of 1927, and uh, we'll read a little bit. Uh, file E. C. Docket uh, 11, Judgment Number 8, 26th day of July 1927, in the Permanent Court of International Justice, in the 12th Ordinary Session, which means seizure. This is a case concerning the factory at Churzow. It's a claim for indemnity, a jurisdictional claim. This is Germany versus Poland, and this is the judgment. The president, this is before the president, Huber, former president Loder, judges Lord Finley, Nyholm, Moore, de Bustamante, Altamira, Oda, Anzalotti, Pessoa, Deputy Judge is Jovanovic, and the National Judge is Rabel Ehrlich. Of course, everybody knows the relative of that Ehrlich, who wrote the population bomb and 
started the push for environmentalism. I wonder how that occurred. This is representative by Germany, Dr. Eric Kaufman, Professor at Bonn, and Poland, Dr. Thaddeus Sobolewski, agent for the Polish government before the Polish-German Mixed Arbitral Tribunal. You can find the link at www.worldcourts.com forward slash PCIJ forward slash ENG, meaning English, forward slash decisions, D E C I S I O N S, forward slash 1927.07.26 underscore Churzow. C H O R Z O W dot H T M. Citation is the factory at Churzow, Germany versus Poland, 1927, P C I J, Series A, number 9, July 26th. Publications Publication of the Permanent Court of International Justice, Series A, number 9, Collection of Judgments, A W Sitch. Hoff's Publishing Company, Leiden, 1927. The court, composed as above, having heard the observations and conclusions of the parties, delivers the following judgment. The government of the German Reich, by an application instituting proceedings filed with the registry of the court on February 8, 1927, in conformity with Article 40 of the statute and Article 35 of the Rules of Court, has submitted to the Permanent Court of International Justice a suit concerning the reparation which, in the contention of the government of the Reich, is due by the Polish government to the um, <coughs> Obersher uh, and Barish, which is, of course, the Bear Corporation. by reason of the attitude adopted by that government towards those companies at the time when it took possession of the nitrate factory situated at Churzow, which attitude had been declared by the court in judgment number 7, May 25, 1926, not to have been in conformity with the provisions of Article 6 and the following articles of the Convention concerning Upper Silesia, concluded at Geneva on, Mar on May 15, 1922 between Germany and Poland, here and after described as the Geneva Convention. Now, you can go ahead and go view that case and what Nazi Germany actually was by going to the link that I had described earlier. Congress owns the world courts they've always owned the world courts that's their baby and what had happened is the bear corporation came in and told congress through its banking system its judges that they had a lot of overhead called polish citizens that were on welfare and social security and retirement benefits and veterans benefits and all of these benefits and it was really expensive to be maintaining the citizens on what is otherwise called welfare. And at that point in time, the court said, yeah, go ahead. You have jurisdiction. And the fallout was what you saw as Nazi Germany. The gas chambers, the firing squads, Auschwitz, and all of the related slaughter of human being happened through Congress, the American Congress, through attorneys, through the medical industry, and especially, especially through the psychological industry. I'll get into that in a little bit. It was required for the United States to come in and sue the United States Incorporated on behalf of humanity because in the Memorandum 200 that Dr. Henry Kissinger had written to the National Security Council in 1974, it was stipulated that the population of the world 
was to be maintained less than 500,000 before the year 2035. This was also written in the Georgia Guidestones and related population policy, which we've been delving into the last few weeks, and we'll continue this series until everybody gets it. It is imperative that you step away from the patronage of these entities killing you and your children through the medical industry, the criminal industry, and the psychological industry. These things are all mechanisms of banking. We've got breaking news. Uh, last night, I know that Bob Bo was covering the uh, plane crash. I'm uh, just now seeing it now. Update victims identified in the deadly plane crash. Um, Huntsville, Alabama, whnt.com. We now know the identities of the three people killed in a plane crash Wednesday afternoon at Huntsville International Airport. Madison County Deputy Coroner David Young identifies the victims as follows. William Christopher II, 57 of Center Point. Robin Gary Smith, 60 of Yukon, Oklahoma. And Kenneth Lynn Rousseau, 67 of Harpersville. Robin Smith was retired Oklahoma Highway Patrol Lieutenant, according to a release from their office. Federal Aviation Administration spokeswoman Kathleen Burgess says a Westwind II aircraft was trying to depart Huntsville International Airport when the plane caught fire with the three people on board. Burgess was unsure of the plane's destination. Madison County Coroner Craig Weisnett confirms the plane's tail number was 793BG. The plane was registered to Sinfields Holdings Finance LLC out of Birmingham. At 4 p.m. press conference, Huntsville International Airport spokesman, spokesperson Karen Yarbrough confirmed the three passengers on the plane all lost their lives. She said the air traffic control tower alerted Huntsville International Airport to the crash at 2.21 p.m. The plane, a 10-seater non-commercial aircraft, crashed just to the right of the runway as it was taking off, Yarbrough said. Nick Dean provided us with the photo you see, and you can find that, of course, at whnt.com. Our hearts go out to the families of the lost. American Apparel files, fires controversial CEO. Now, this is very interesting to see the cannibalism today. The Board of American Apparel ousted founder Dove Charney on Wednesday, moving to replace the controversial CEO. Board member Alan Mayer said the decision to remove Charney grew out of an ongoing investigation into alleged misconduct, although the company did not provide more details. Charney founded American Apparel in 1998, building an operation that was famous for its sex-infused advertising campaigns and unorthodox business practices. The CEO faced a, a series of sexual harassment suits filed by employees in recent years. Others reported that Charney had conducted interviews and company meetings in his underwear. Sounds like cannibalism to me. It's very sad to see because he's the founder. Um, again... I tried to warn everybody you need to step away. Human trafficking is human trafficking. Today from allafrica.com, Ethiopia, former regional governor faces terrorism charge. Former Gambella regional government president Okelo Akai Ipola, who is known by the nickname Monorim Kawanam, was charged with terrorism at the Federal Supreme Court 19th criminal bench on several on Wednesday, the 52-year-old former governor was charged along with several South Sudanese nationals. The subjects, suspects were found to be plotting to take over the Gambela Regional State in an attempt to establish an autonomous state for the Gambela people, forming a couple of political fronts, such as the Gambela's People's Liberation Movement, GPLM, and the Gambela Democratic Movement, the GDM, the charge read. According to the charge, they had mobilized ethnic Gambellas in the United States, Austria, Canada, and other European countries for fundraising and military services. It's interesting that these people are no longer 
tolerating these types of things, although they need to look a little higher at the federal government that's the one that's uh, charging these national states for attempting to undercut the feds. From PNG.com, county employees suspended after sex offense charges. An S. Gambia County employee charged with it, electronically soliciting a child for sex and transmitting obscene material to child has been placed on unpaid leave until his case is processed by an Alabama court. Douglas Scott Griffin, 38, was arrested by the S. Gambia County Sheriff's Office on May 16th for outstanding warrants from the Henry County, Alabama Sheriff's Office. He has been actively working for the county since being released on bond last month. County officials announced Wednesday afternoon that Griffith was suspended indefinitely after learning the details of his arrest on warrants for two counts of transmitting obscene material to a child and one count of child solicitation by computer. County Administrator Jack Brown immediately opened a review of Griffith's employment status Wednesday after learning the details of Griffith's arrest. County Public Information Manager Kathleen Dole Castro said, Brown became aware of the details after receiving a copy of the re arrest report from the Pensacola News Journal. Griffith, who serves as an inspector for the Escambia County Engineering Department, allegedly sent hundreds of sexually explicit emails during work hours on a county-issued cell phone to a sheriff's investigator whom he believed to be a 14-year-old girl, according to the Henry County Sheriff's Office. Robert Tassebaum, Deputy Division Manager for the Escambia County Engineering Department, confirmed to investigators that the phone use in communicating with the sheriff's investigator, who Griffith thought was a 14-year-old girl, belonged to the county and was assigned to Griffith. Castlebaum also was shown a photo of Griffith sent from the phone, and it confirmed it was Griffith, according to the arrest report. Castlebaum is a deputy division manager within the division where Griffith works, but he is not Griffith's direct supervisor, Bill Castro said. One hour later, investigators received three warrants for Griffith's arrest and arrested him at his home. Griffith was transferred to Henry County Jail May 19th and released on $60,000 bond the following day, according to Henry County Sheriff's Office. Griffith returned to work immediately after being released and was performing his normal duties within the county. County inspectors are responsible for monitoring construction projects conducting final inspections of construction sites for planet compliance and processing inspection photos. Del Castro said the county asked for Griffith's discharge paperwork upon his release and the only stipulation on the documents was that Griffith could not use the internet. Del Castro said there is no written policy for how employees are reintegrated into their position after a criminal arrest, but quote, after this there will be, end quote. In the past, incidents have been handled on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the nature of the charges. Del Castro said Kassenbaum will not face disciplinary action. According to Griffith's arrest report, he responded to a Craigslist ad posted by a Henry County Sheriff's investigator who was posing as a 14-year-old girl. And first children, they hunt for victim children, they hunt for latchkey children, they hunt for children while you're at work and kept busy with all of this entertainment and the news and the mainstream media they're hunting your children this is Nazi Germany this is how they cut the overhead and create opportunities called uh, human capital capacity building I mean I've been reading these and going through these things for so long now and, and you know people get with me on Skype or Facebook and they're like oh you sounded so tired yeah, hell yeah I'm exhausted I don't want to witness these things any further I do not like these things I am not entertained by these things. I am sickened by these things. This is not the first time. This is not the second time or the 50th time. The United States of America Congress has been doing this globally 
since it was called Rome, since it was called France, since it was called Germany. And you can read all about this and their little empire in the Treaty of Westphalia of 1648. They established the original banks with the original charters. Those things, those charters, create banks for human trafficking. 1600s, going all the way back. The Declaration of Independence. We've got the 4th of July coming up. The Declaration of Independence declared you all missing. Independent means not the opposite of dependent. It means they're coming in to secede your estates because you're all missing. You're lost at sea. You have no idea who you are. Of course you don't. Genesis stems from the word abiogenesis, from the doctrine of, of abiogenesis, meaning away from life, mind, and soul. Exo means outside of, and deus means God. The book of Exodus means outside of God. You're absolutely outside of God when you start patronizing a judge named Moses. After the CIA tells you, you all are stealing each other's wives and asses and killing each other by handing out a, a new constitution. Thou shalt not kill each other and steal each other's wives and asses. Well, what did that tell you? It told you that you were doing it. Not that the CIA was doing it. Not that the FBI was doing that. Not that this this guy from, from McHenry County was doing that. Let's see, what was it again? County employees suspended after sex offense charges. Moses never told you about this guy. He never told you how practiced he is. He never told you that that's what he does. He's a hunter on behalf of a county discharging congressional bankruptcy by using your kids as human capital. Moses never mentioned that. You're supposed to use your own discretion and ask yourself, am I stealing my neighbor's asses and wives? No. Are you out messing with kids? No. Well, then who do you need protection from besides the judges and attorneys and agents? And of course, the next book of the manifest there, after a biogenesis, an exodus, is Leviticus. The action of taxation. Levy stems from the word tax, to tax. The action of taxing is Leviticus. And of course, to indoctrinate, it takes three times repetition. So then. The next book is, of course, Deuteronomy, in French means second word, second Torah. It's the second repeat. And you can follow the book all the way through, Judges, Acts. And Judges tell you <laughs> the, the story of Samson and Delilah, for example. The priests teach that, oh, she cut his hair off. Go read it. Go read the story of Samson and Delilah and Judges. She was a human agent and she collected his information to find out what got to him. And then she fed that to the judges, which is what human does, so that they could trick him out. And that's what brought his house down around him. Same Eve that it talks about in a biogenesis. Same Eve that buys the concepts from the tree of knowledge and then feeds them to her husband. Same thing. Different set of metaphor or example 
so that you can use your own discretion. But most aren't. They want the human ease. You want the easy way. You want so badly to ask those judges to protect you. You want so badly to keep your county jobs and your teaching jobs. You want so badly to fit in at a church because if you don't do what they say, you're going to be excommunicated. That's part and parcel of the action of Delphi, the Delphi technique. Those are actually threats upon you, criminal coercion. If you're threatened to be excommunicated if you don't do this or you don't do that, it's criminal coercion. Does it make it any nicer if a priest does it? Is it less criminal if he's wearing a robe? You see, so we need to start prioritizing here. Humanity is in dire straits. This is Nazi Germany perpetually. You're in distress. You're inside of the war upon you. It's psychological. It's not only physical. You see the physical aspect. And none of you have cared up to this point. Your brothers and sisters are being slaughtered day after day after day. And you're... you're just consenting right along. Oh, they're different than me. You know, those Muslims over there, or those Christians over there, or those Jews. That's the whole point. Those are the eight stages of genocide. If you're not taught to hate each other, Congress can't perpetrate genocide against you. My goodness. If they couldn't do that, corporations would go hungry, homeless. You don't want corporations going hungry and homeless, do you? We want to keep up those Federal Reserve dollars that are handed to Judas to turn on Jesus day after day. I am so pissed. I am so pissed. Because I had to witness Casey Kasem. And this is after. This is after Bo's mom. This is after Joseph Reynolds. This is after Mickey Rooney. This is after day after day after day after day. Of Jesus being crucified by Judas. Being delivered up by Judas. By casting lots and envy. I'm pissed. How dare you allow these things to occur? How dare you patronize this thing and continue these things? Am I tired? You bet I'm tired. I just can't believe this. It's appalling that these things are still occurring. It's abhorrent to God. And yet day after day, you're still entertaining all these things. No, that's not me. He's brown or black or red or yellow. That's not me. Go ahead and kill him. You know, again, we've talked about the Soldiers and Sailors Act so many times and what they had promised soldiers who patron patronize and serve quote a country and today again 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 and again and again and again and again it's happening again. From gma.yahoo.com, sailor serving overseas order to appear in custody fight. He's deployed. Soldiers and Sailors Act said that if, if somebody's deployed and they're on duty, they can't be compelled to show up at court, they're going to have to put it up. 
Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. This guy thinks that he's protecting human beings by being over in another country, killing them. So he leaves his daughter in a safe place. Now get this. A sailor serving on a submarine is locked in a fight a world away to keep custody of his six-year-old girl. Navy sa submariner Matthew Hendes is stationed on a submarine in the Pacific, but he's been ordered to appear in Michigan courtroom Monday in a custody battle with his ex-wife Angela involving their daughter Kaylee. Hendes was given permanent custody of Kaylee in 2010 after she was reportedly removed from Angela's home by Child Protective Services. Kaylee has been living with Hindus' wife, Benita Lynn, her stepmother, in Washington State, while Hindus is deployed aboard a nuclear submarine in the Pacific Ocean. Despite Hindus' assignment, a judge has ordered Hindus to appear in court or for his contempt. Hindus' lawyers argue he should be protected by the Service Members' Civil Relief Act, which was originally the Soldiers and Sailors Act, and it has been greatly perverted by such as John McCain. John McCain is a monster. He is nothing for humanity and nothing for veterans or soldiers that are serving. John McCain himself has facilitated more reclamation than any other Congress member. He's also done more damage to veterans than Obama himself, and Obama's one of the worst. But seven minutes from now, you're going to forget about this conversation, and it'll be out of your mind, and we'll go all go on about our business. Quote, the judge hearing the case, Circuit Judge Margaret No, disagreed with the attorney, adding, quote, if the child is not in the care and custody of the father, the child should be in the care and custody of the mother, period. Done deal. Because, you know, judges don't make any money if children are not being human trafficked and given to psychopaths. There's no feet splitting between the judge, psychiatrist, and the other attorneys if the child's not harmed in some way. We can't have that, can we? I mean, if we had that, corporations would go hungry and homeless. And if that were to happen, I mean, I know that everybody would just be sad. Because they wouldn't be able to get their chicken wrapped up in plastic wrap and soy milk and all of these other pretend products that they rely on. Am I tired? Yes, I'm tired. I'm tired of witnessing these things. I'm tired of humanity condoning this type of behavior and patronizing these bankers in the black dresses tricking children out for a buck last year I talked to Patrick a veteran who came back he came home and he had inherited land from his father but the first thing they did was they called him violent because he served in a war and they took his child from him and in this they redistributed all of his assets and left him on his butt then of course he inherited that property and the property was had no mortgage on it had no mortgage but they came in to foreclose on him and everybody's going to wonder why there's so many homeless veterans out there. Everybody's going to ponder these things and scratch their heads and try to blame these veterans because there's so many things out there that says it's their fault. Psychi the psychiatric industry alone says that they're all nuts. It doesn't say that they came home 
and got walloped by the family and probate courts and everything stolen from them. And now they're homeless. And now you see them as panhandlers. Never notice those things because it's outside of your purview. You don't have to. You're never forced to notice those things. You're comfortable. Your tummy's full. You got a nice warm bed to go to at night. And you got that soft, soft television that you're watching day after day after day feeding you all of this programming. And to top it all off, you've got the prescription medications. Just in case things get a little bit hectic, you can dope right up. Calm right down. You don't have to deal with anything. The Soma Theory says that you can close your eyes and it goes away. Until it happens to you. Oh, but that's a long time away, isn't it? No. No, the depopulation program is set to end in 2035. The numbers are required to be there. 2035. And you can read this at the Rockefeller Institute. You can read this by going through your government's documentations. It's all written. There's nothing that's not written. Absolutely nothing that's not written. Day after day, this is occurring. Day after day, everybody's still patronizing this. From News Info, Inquire.net, lawyer Nepal's no public official can't be charged with plunder. I love this. They, they don't uh, speak a really good English. -y. <laughs> this is a politician that writes this. In Manila, Philippines again. And this, we've been watching this. Everybody's entertained, but it's getting getting hectic there. The lawyer of Janet Lim Napoles told the Antigraph Court on Thursday that his client should not be charged with plunder over her alleged involvement in the pork barrel scam. Attorney Stephen David said in a hearing before the Sandy Bay Ban <laughs> sorry Sandy Ganbayan First Division that Napoles plunder wraps should be dismissed because she's not a public official. She's got a different hat on. That crime didn't occur. Base. I call base. You know, when I was little, we used to play shark, and the, and the floor was covered in water, and we jump all over the furniture. We call base. We were playing tag, and this is what the attorneys seem to enjoy doing with attorney work product doctrine. Nope, can't charge her, can't arrest him. She has a different hat on. The president the other day was calling for that uh, Senate can't be arrested in the Senate. You know, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. Come on, you guys. You all have to wake up, and you have to wake up your brothers and sisters. So I am really tired. And every day, it just... It eats, it eats, and eats. And there are days when... We'll be back after the break, folks. Stick around. We are a listener-supported radio station where, if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. We're also simulcasting tonight, of course, on No Borders Radio at noborderradio.co.uk as well as tiernasore.com. Again, thank you for joining us. From WBIW.com, County Treasurer says judge also mishandled money. Muncie, Indiana, Central Indiana County Treasurer charged with mishandling public money wants the judge overseeing his case to step aside, arguing she did the same thing. Delaware County Treasurer John Doro was charged in April with 47 counts, 44 of which involved failing to deposit public funds within 24 hours as required by state law. 
The Star Press report stores lawyers have filed a motion asking Delaware Circuit Court Judge Marianne Voorhees to recuse herself. The motion states, the motion says state audits from 2005 to 2010 indicate that departments overseen by Delaware County's five judges also deposited funds late. Of course they did. I'll explain the schematic in a minute. The county prosecutor's office says it's reviewing the motion. It also is seeking to have Dora removed from office. Isn't that nice? Isn't that special? Now, for example, one aspect of the Internal Revenue Service is the child support enforcement. If you go back to the 1980 census, there was never a need for child support enforcement. Yes, there's a few people that are hurting because they, you know, they abrogated the contract, they went off seeking greener pastures, and now they want paid to raise kids. However, back in the 1980s, it says that mothers were the main deadbeat. Fathers paid their support on time, yada yada. But the schematic is in withholding those funds. Now, through the Department of Agriculture, you can find yourself listed as an animal under 7 U.S.C agriculture and go to the definition of what an animal is, man, it's included. Of course, this is under the Preservation Act 16 U.S.C. 7. You're being pre-served under this schematic. So the Department of Agriculture comes in and facilitates commerce and navigation with corporations and offers you not only things called debt notes, which are dollar bills, those are bills, 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 not money, they're bills. Not only do they offer you these bills, then they offer you stamps, food stamps, and things like this. They're not even pennies on the dollar. One's a debt note. And one's monopoly money. Neither one of them is lawful money. And I mean, these, these things are so crazy. It's crazier that we could all buy into these things for so long. Continuously patronizing this thing. Time after time after time after time as it slaughters us right in front of our eyes. So anyway, one of the greatest schematics that they got going on is a scheme of um, undelivered child support. You need to look that up for yourself. So mom thinks that dad's not paying child support. It's the government that knows where mom is. It's the government that knows where dad is. Dad pays the child support. And each county, each judge, bank, is facilitating those debt notes. Taking loans on those assets, they call them assets. As they hold them and they don't deposit them. Public use, and that's, that's just another part of their scheme that they have going on through the Internal Revenue Service. Part of that is taking kids off their parents and the first part of that is dividing the parents, offering one or the other, whoever's the uh, Judas, benefits of separation, benefits of division. And it's so sad because humanity is buying into these things and buying into a war tactic known as hearts and minds or winning hearts and minds. You can read about this in sociological studies. Um, 
think a, a prominent one is uh, sticks and carrots in procurement. I'm sorry I'm so slow tonight, folks. I'm dealing with ulcers again, and I'm not the most comfortable at this moment. Stress and, and um, it's all around. It's not a, a fun predicament. To continuously take up the stress, uh, and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining in any way. Right now, I'm just not very comfortable at all. Jesus said, "Take up your cross and follow me." So I'll I'll take up your cross for as long as it takes until. You are able to bear this burden and realize what's going on so that you can stand. It's just been profound. I mean, all of these things all around the, the, the um, cannibalism, everything we're watching come down the pike. And, I really thought that humanity would really be chomp at the bit with uh, Casey Kasem. But in the end, Gene was, was left alone and Liberty was left alone to deal with the psychopaths in their lives. Jesus had said during the resurrection that widows are no longer preyed on. They're no longer a target or up for grabs by the Roman senators and the Stasi agents and the Atern and Satan and Barabbas. Barabbas simply means etymology on Barabbas means son of the master and of course they're referring to the actual murderer which is the attorney same murderer who's never been held accountable until now same murderer who didn't get the cross originally and they didn't 1933 they came in under the emergency banking act and said hey Citizens are hypothecated. I'm not hypothecated. We're going to be banking citizens here. We're not going to touch me. What do you think this is? It's just been so profound to watch all things occur and the allowance. The allowance. Human humanity sat right there and watched Casey Kasem being destroyed by the courts. And in the end, as he lay dying, during his hour of need, he was surrounded by psychopaths. He wasn't around Jean, his wife, whom he had married because he loved her, he trusted her. He was around psychopaths and starved him to death during his last days, claiming that that suffering is less than other suffering, you know, like attorneys not having fat pockets. We don't want to see that suffering, right? I mean, you guys, that's what you evidenced during the time that Jean was left alone to defend herself against the predators. That's what the people said. Let him be crucified. Again. Matthew 27, again. 
And as you continue to sit there and do nothing, as you see these things, you're telling the governor, the pilot, that you enjoy them. They are entertaining, and you're entertained by envy and casting lots. And it's you who has the authority, who is the one that directs the crucifixion of Jesus. It is always, always, always put to the people. And if you're entertained by it, it continues to occur. From NECN.com, New Hampshire prosecutor arrested for oxycodone possession. On the same day that Rockingham County Attorney Jim Reams retired under a black cloud, one of his prosecutors was arrested on a drug possession charge. New Hampshire Attorney General Joseph A. Foster announced that Zachary Cross, 29, of an assistant Rockingham Attor County attorney, was arrested on Tuesday by the New Hampshire Drug Task Force and the Manchester Police Department in charge of one count of possession of a controlled drug, oxycodone, the investigation is ongoing. Cross was released on a $2,500 cash bail and is scheduled to be arraigned on Manchester District Court on a later date. Reams, who had been the Rockingham County attorney since 1998, retired Tuesday amid an investigation into sexual harassment and financial mismanagement. He was suspended in November but returned to the job in May after a judge ruled he couldn't be kept out of office while the Attorney General attempted to permanently remove him. If you keep patronizing it, this stupid crap still happens. You have a banker that is protecting the other banker from being punished for banking. If you want to see them held accountable, you are going to have to hold them accountable. If you are entertained by Tracy Morgan being in an accident, or Gene and Casey Kasem being terrorized by psychopathy, and you're entertained by O.J. Simpson again, this stuff continues to occur day after day it's up to you the people whether or not you want Jesus to be crucified or you're gonna hold Barabbas the attorney accountable for his works now we have evidence for you the genocide we walked you through from February of last year when the doctors first diagnosed Bo's mother with cancer without any pathology whatsoever. They just gave her the concept and she ran with it. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and November when they finally killed her through chemical warfare. And less than one month later, we evidence the same thing with Joseph Reynolds. I was on the phone with the doctor as he was injecting Joseph Reynolds with a lethal injection of not only Ativan, but Haldol and salt water to drown Joseph Reynolds. If you care... I've got pictures spanning six months before this onslaught that was perpetrated by the guardian ad litem and David John East, the attorney, showing Joseph how healthy he was before the attorney got involved, before the GAL got involved. and how it took less than three months to kill him to get out his property. 
And you watch the same thing occur with Casey Kasem. His diagnosis happened like last year. With his newfangled stuff. And then he couldn't speak anymore and he couldn't think anymore. That's all thanks to prescription medication. These same medications that they use in le lethal injections. Those of you that have been buying into this system, you are absolutely innocent unless you're still patronizing the system after you know what it does. If you innocently patronized it and it killed you or it killed your spouse, it's not your fault. You were duped. You were suckered. Admit it. Walk on. Hold it accountable now. Don't hang your head. Don't go elsewhere. Don't don't ignore it. Don't don't talk yourself out of you know what you just witnessed. Hold it accountable. That's your function. This stuff, it's not relative to your being. It's not relative to your being to hide behind a judge or hide behind a doctor or hide behind a psychiatrist. It's not even relative to know what those things are. Those are all concepts. First Corinthians 6. You have raised it up. You have to raise us up with your own power, by your own power. That's your obligation. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Required. These things are, I think humanity cannot take any more of this stuff. From the New York Daily News.com, Ohio attorney raped woman after she refused sex with judge for light sentence for her son, according to testimony. Columbus, Ohio-based criminal defense attorney Javier Mangal, 52, is on trial for sexual assault on five different women dating back to 1990, 1998. One accuser says he raped her and masturbated in front of her when he defended her son several years ago. This is terrifying. Well, I'll tell you what. How many women have done this and said, okay. How many women have turned on their children and said, okay, they're criminal, let's get them a lighter sentence, and went ahead and, and had sex with the judge? Come on. It's time for accountability now, girls. Because it's going to end. It's going to end now. I, I, I will not tolerate witnessing these things any further. Yeah, you say I sound exhausted. Yes, we're going 24 hours a day. Back channel. And I can guarantee you, when it's your turn, you're going to be held accountable. I can guarantee this. I'll continue reading. An Ohio lawyer raped a woman in a courtroom conference room after he tried to convince a victim to have sex with a judge to earn a favorable sentence for her son, the attorney's client, the woman testified Monday. Columbus-based criminal defense attorney Javier Mango, 52, has been accused by five different women of sexual misconduct and stands trial on charges of rape, sexual battery, gross sexual imposition, kidnapping, and public indecency. Monday's accuser, the third woman to testify in what has thus far been a week-long trial, said Armangout stripped naked and masturbated in front of her ten different times in his office during the time she employed him to defend her, her son, the Columbus Dispatch reported. On August 26, 2008, the night before her son was to be sentenced, Armangout 
and the man he told the woman was Judge Richard A. Fry, discussed the idea of sex for a lenient sentence. The woman refused, and the next day Fry sentenced her son to four years in prison. Now, I, I read through this. I don't see any charges for Fry. I see that he was subpoenaed to testify. I don't see the other end of the prostitution of the child to juvenile justice. I, I looked all through here. I didn't see any psychiatrists. Didn't see any other pedophiles. And this is the same. This is so relative to the Cash for Kids scandal. You bet I'm pissed. So a judge got some time. A judge got some time. A child committed suicide during that whole thing. At least one. No psychiatrist was ever charged. No one who ever bought the children from the judges were charged. No facility was ever charged. No juvenile justice center. No entity. But the judge was charged for cash for kids. They were just pimps. What about the actual predator? The abuser of children. The attorneys that were messing with children, having sex, molesting, raping children. Get your priorities right and get your heads out of your rectums. This is terrifying. You're tolerating behavior that's absolutely intolerable. You're allowing children to be cannibalized by a system designed to cannibalize children. Your children. My children. This is not acceptable. Absolutely disgusting. And the Boston Globe.com accused Needham doctor was carrying his lawyer asserts. Quote to prosecutors, he was no different than a street level do drug dealer. Dr. Joseph P. Zola, a prominent Needham doctor, stands accused of irresponsibly prescribing powerful painkillers. Let me repeat that. He's accused of irresponsibly prescribing powerful painkillers, leading to at least six overdose deaths. Here's Barabbas. He murdered six people, six human beings. And he's accused of irresponsible prescribing painkillers. Now the drug inserts on those things say they kill you. They shut down your bodily functions. And I don't see a pharmaceutical company charged with drug trafficking. I do not see here... Glaxo Smith Klein or Merck charged with genocide here. I see a doctor playing the fall guy, taking one for the team, accused of irresponsible prescribing powerful painkillers. And here in this article, six human murder victims
The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, reported in 2013 that 42 females per day, per day, are dying because of prescription drug overdose. 42 human beings are being murdered by the pharmaceutical industry every day. And that is only in the United States Incorporated. And here's a fall guy. Let's take one for the team. Now, there's a judge that has charged him for the use of six human beings' bodies. This is called The Nature of Rent, written by Malthus. This is Malthusian theory. And it's founded on the Lend-Lease Agreement, the Master Lend-Lease Agreement that Roosevelt and Churchill entered into back when Roosevelt was the Attorney-in-Chief of the United States Incorporated. This is banking. This is human trafficking. This is genocide. It is nothing but genocide. It is nothing but human trafficking. It is nothing but commerce and navigation maintained by the U.S. Congress. That thing you're calling your father, the Lord God, you're patronizing. That thing that tricks you out as Job. You have to stop patronizing this thing. Bob McDonald's out kissing babies in Virginia, it says on WJLA. Bob McDonald, former Virginia governor, makes first non-court ap public appearance since corruption charges. Richmond, Virginia, former governor Bob McDonald's received sustained applause from several hundred Virginia Republicans on Tuesday evening at a political cookout that marked the former governor's first public appearance outside of a federal courthouse since his indictment on corruption charges earlier this year. Quote, I'm blessed to have a lot of friends, McDonald told reporters as a line of supporters formed to offer words of encouragement to the former governor and have pictures taken with him. Rubbing shoulders with Pilate is such a good idea. McDonald and his wife, Maureen McDonald, were indicted on corruption charges in January. The former first couple are charged with accepting more than $165,000 from his former CEO of a dietary supplements company in exchange for helping to promote his products. The McDonald's pleaded not guilty. Of course. Of course they did. That's always what happens. You know... It's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. These things are mind-boggling that you can continue to patronize this thing and think that at some point in time it's going to stop preying on you. The governor is always pilot acting under Federal Emergency Management Acts. You, the human being, are states of being. You are the emergency states referred to in the emergency rules handed out by each governor that's tricking you out. That's how Jesus is crucified, casting lots. Not just taking up titles as you see them, Mr., Mrs., Mother, Father, Black, White, Christian, Jew, Hebrew, Muslim, Patriot, individual, man, woman. Those titles also come in the form of diagnosis. 
victim abused, bipolar, depressed, injured, and it all runs through the CMS system. You can go visit that at CMS.gov, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services. That's how these bankers get paid through the Federal Reserve System. Federal Reservation. Reservation on Rights. And of course, you can go back to Matthew 27 and read all about the Federal Reserve. That's the thing that was paying Judas to do what Judas was doing to deliver up Jesus. And the same thing that the priests and, and uh, elders could not put the money back into the treasury. Well, why not? Well, they're bills. These are bills. You can only put lawful money into the treasury. Bills, they wrap around your neck as a millstone. They're bills. National debt. Stems from the Devonshire Participation Program. Devonshire is a debt secured by your own earning power. How's that working out for you? A debt secured by your own earning power maintains that you are a pledged asset. You go back to the Articles of Confederation. Article 12 says you're pledged. You're charged and pledged to maintain corporate welfare. Making sure that no corporation ever goes hungry or homeless. Of course, just after that, the 1802 and tag. Of course, going back to the definition of confederacy. Black's Law Dictionary says it's a criminal enterprise. And the very last line says, see federal government. Okay, so you are patronizing a criminal enterprise. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to fall back on the state in cognitive dissonance? Are you going to continue to patronize it after you know that it's killing you and your kids? Your grandparents, your mothers, your fathers, uncles, aunts. It all depends on market conditions and what they need at whatever time under the doctrines of necessity. necessity. Whatever is not lawful shall be made so by necessity. That's the doctrine of necessity. When they needed to call a bunch of population, they made abortion legal. That was a necessity under the doctrines of necessity. You're patronizing something that is so horrifying. It's killing you. Raping and molesting your babies. Tricking you out by court process. By medical industry. By psychi psychiatrists. It's absolutely horrifying that these things can occur. Over and over and over and over again. There's a little girl on the run this week. One of your children. She doesn't believe in vaccinations. She knows how harmful they are. CNN is reporting that she's kidnapped her own child. To keep a child away from the medical industry. I know a lot of you patronize this thing. And you're screaming right now. Go read about how horrifying vaccinations are. Better yet, go look at the 1924 Racial Integrity Act. Go read about Bolshevik Russia. And how medical propaganda is first implicated against the populace after they kill off the elders. This is a depopulation program. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. 
But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before their governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same hour that you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brothers shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, and he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they prosecute you in this city, flee into another city, for verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant be as his Lord. If they, call, they, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall be, they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not which kill, them the, kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold to a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very heads, the very hairs, of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace upon this earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and the man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. And of course he's referring to the relative me, take up your cross and follow me. Me never referred to the psychological you that the psychiatrists have taught you to see and protect. Me always referred to the one you see in front of you. Your earth, Jesus. The very same one that you see with your own eyes. Those that you love and are obligated to protect. As your God. And Jesus said, divest yourself of all that possesses you. Stop taking up those concepts. Stop believing in all of these things. Stop calling something else your father. Stop buying into all of these garbage theories. And for the love of God, stop turning on the children. There's so many things this week. Um, of course, uh, the students were learning again about bank. From Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, bank. Number one, a bench or seat. The bench or tribunal occupied by the judges. The seat of judgment, a court the full bench or full court, the assembly of all the judges of a court, 
A sitting in bank is a meeting of all the judges of a court, usually for the purpose of hearing arguments on demurs, points reserved, motions for a new trial, etc., as distinguished from the sitting of a single judge at the Assises or Nisi Prius and from trials at bar, but in this sense, bane is the more usual form of the word. Number two, an institution of great value in the commercial world, empowered to receive deposits of money, to make loans and to issue its promissory notes, designated to circulate as money and commonly called, quote, bank notes or bank bills, or to perform any one or more of these functions. The term bank is usually restricted in its application to an incorporated body, while a private individual making it his business to conduct banking operations is denominated a banker. Also, the house or place where such business is carried on. And Jesus had gone into a court and overturned the tables of the money changers. And he expressly went off on the judges and attorneys and said, You have turned my house into a den of thieves. Because it's under God's word that they're operating on. And maintaining that they're charging perpetrators of criminal activity in order to protect you. When in reality, they're charging perpetrators of criminal activity in a perpetual prostitution scam. Your body becomes the prostitute. The perpetrator of crimes becomes the John renting out your body. And the judge and attorneys are nothing more than pimps. Tricking you out. And if you want to see what I see every single day, it's worse in reference to children. Because when a predator is molesting, raping, killing, abusing children, that pimp, that judge will rush right in there and charge for rent and use of that baby's body. And the most prolific abusers of children are the attorneys, politicians. Patrick Leahy alone is like the number two predator. Joseph Biden is number one. These laws that these folks have enacted as Senate members are privacy laws to protect the schematic and to prevent you from holding them accountable. This is their function. It's always been the same Senate, the same Roman Senate as it ever was. And it's protected because you patronize and live inside of the House of Representatives. And it's called a matrix. The word matrix means womb. It means an artificial womb. These attorneys are cashing in on every facet of humanity. The word injure means to bring into law. Every time your child, you, your mothers, your fathers are injured or brought into law, there's an attorney cashing in. There's that banker tricking you out in a perpetual prostitution ring. And this one, it uses you until your body gives out in the action of genocide. And this is over and over and over and over again. And it does not end until you make it end. It does not end until you make it end. Stop calling it your father. Stop patronizing it. If there's a fictional creation that only lives because you patronize it 
and you believe in it and you call it your father, you can kill it by stopping the patriotism. Stop funding it. Stop believing in it. Stop adhering to it. And stop clapping your hands as it uses your fellow human beings as fodder to feed itself. These things are, are absolutely horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. It is all written. You know about Satan. You know about the turn. You know about Barabbas. And it has to be time. It, it, right now it's imperative that you cut it off at the knees and stop allowing it to grow. From edamonline.com, Barabbas comes from Greek, Barabbas from America. Aramaic, Baraba, son of the father or son of the master. In Hebrew, it would be Ben Abba. From AdamOnline.com, Satan, proper name of the quote, supreme evil spirit in Christianity, Old English, Satan from late Latin, Satan in Vulgate, in Old Testament only, from Greek, Satanos from Hebrew, Satan. Quote, adversary, one who plots against another. From Satan, quote, to show enmity, to oppose, to plot against. From root, S-T-N, one who opposes, obstructs, or acts as an adversary. From AdamOnline.com, a turn, late 13th century Anglo-French, Quote, to turn over to another. From Old French, a turn or to turn, turn to assign, attribute, dispose. From A, meaning to, plus turn or, to turn. In feudal law, quote, to transfer homage or allegiance to another lord. Barabbas, quote, son of the father or son of the master. End quote. These things don't go away if you close your eyes or stick your head in the sand. Hurry! Oh my gosh! Be an ostrich! Be an ostrich! Close your eyes! You don't want to hear this! We don't want to know! We don't want to know it's an attorney! Oh my gosh! I just paid my attorney like thousands of dollars to represent me in court! I don't want to know! They're playing chess using a human being. You can find the, uh, Dialogue of the Exchequer, if you go to avalon.law.yale.edu forward slash medieval forward slash exchec, E-X-C-H-E-Q dot A-S-P. Part 14. The Thesaurus. Quote. That thesaurus sometimes means the money itself, sometimes the place where it is kept. It's a lot different than they taught you, isn't it? Quote, No, moreover, that thesaurus sometimes mean the money in cash itself, as well as gold or silver vessels of different kinds and changes of vestments, hats, clothes. According to this acceptation, it is said, quote, Where thy treasure is, there will thy heart be also, quote, end quote. For thesaurus is called the place in which it reposes. Therefore, thesaurus equals, quote, our thesis, namely the place of gold, so that if one asks about one, someone where he is, it may be incongruously re be replied, quote, He is in the thesaurus. That is, in the place where the thesaurus is kept, cash money indeed, or other things mentioned having once been in a safe place, are not taken away except by mandate of the king. They are sent to him to be distributed for the necessary uses. But there are many things in the repository vaults of the treasury which are carried around, and they are shut up and guarded by the treasurer and the chamberlains. 
as has been more fully shown above, such are the seal of the king concerning which thou cost to ask, the doomsday book, the so-called exactory rolls, which some name the writ of farms, likewise the great yearly pipe rolls, the rolls of accounts, a numerous multitude of privileges, counter tallies of receipts, rolls of receipts, and writs of the king concerning outlays of the treasury, and many other things, which, when the exchequer is in session, are necessary to its daily uses. Part 16. What is the Doomsday Book, and for what purpose composed? When that distinguished conqueror of England, a relative by blood of the same prelate, had subdued the utmost limits of the island to his rule, and had tamed the mind of the rebels by examples of terrible things, Moses going up on the hill, he decreed, lest a free opportunity of airing should again be given, that the people subject to him should submit in writing to written customs and laws, the English laws therefore being laid before him, according to their triple distinction, that is, Mercian law, Dane law, and West Saxon law. Some he rejected, others moreover approving. He added to them the transmarine laws of Neustria, which seemed most efficacious for protecting the peace of the kingdom at length, lest anything should seem to be wanting to the sum of all his forethought. Having taken counsel, he dispatched them his, from his side, a most discreet men in circuit throughout the kingdom. By these men in this way, a diligent description of the whole land was made by regard to its woods, as well as its pastures and meadows, also its agriculture, and this description, having been noted down in common words, it was collected into a book in order, namely, that each one, content with his own right, should not with impunity usurp that of another. Moreover, the survey is made by the counties, by hundreds, and by hides, the name of the king being marked at the very head, and then in turn the names of the other lords being placed according to the dignity of their standing, that is to say, those who are tenants in chief of the king. Be simple. Moreover, against the separate names thus arranged in order of place numbers by means of which, below in the course of the book itself, whatever concerns these persons is more easily found. This book is called by the natives Dome's Day, that is, by the metaphor, the Day of Judgment, for just as sentence of that strict and terrible last trial cannot possibly be eluded by any art of turgiversation, giversation, sorry, to when in the kingdom contention shall arise concerning these things that are there noted, when the book is appealed to its sentence cannot be scorned or avoided with impunity. On this account we have named this book the Book of Dooms, not that in it a sentence is given concerning any doubtful matters to come up, but that from it, as from judgment that has been given, it is not allowed in any way to depart. When you're taking up titles and concepts, you are allowing yourself to be judged in a fictional manner. So if you're morally bad boys and bad girls, or you're ethically bad boys and bad girls, or your psychologically bad boys and bad girls, without having harmed another human being, you're allowing yourself to be judged. And we'll be back on Saturday, folks.